Charlie Watts, born on June 2, 1941 in London, England. He was an English musician who achieved international fame as the drummer of the Rolling Stones from 1963 until his death in 2021. Originally trained as a graphic artist, Watts developed an interest in jazz at a young age and joined the band Blues Incorporated. He also started playing drums in London's rhythm and blues clubs, where he met future bandmates Mick Jagger, Keith Richards and Brian Jones. In January 1963, he left Blues Incorporated and joined the Rolling Stones as drummer, while doubling as designer of their record sleeves and tour stages. Watts' first public appearance as a permanent member was in February 1963, and he remained with the group for 58 years. Nicknamed the Wembley Whammer by Jagger, Watts cited jazz as a major influence on his drumming style. At the time of Watts' death, Watts, Jagger and Richards were the only members of the band to have performed on every one of the band's studio albums. Aside from his career with the Rolling Stones, Watts toured with his own group, the Charlie Watts Quintet, and appeared in London at Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club with the Charlie Watts Tentet. In 1989, Watts was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In 2004, he was inducted into the UK Music Hall of Fame with the Rolling Stones. He is often regarded as one of the greatest drummers of all time. In mid-1962, Watts first met Brian Jones, Ian, Stu, Stuart, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, who also frequented the London Rhythm and Blues Clubs, but it was not until January 1963 that Watts finally agreed to join the Rolling Stones. Initially, the band could not afford to pay Watts, who had been earning a regular salary from his gigs. His first public appearance as a permanent member was at the Ealing Jazz Club on 2 February 1963. Watts was involved in many activities outside his life as a member of the Rolling Stones. In December 1964, he published a cartoon tribute to Charlie Parker titled Ode to a High Flying Bird. Although he made his name in rock, his personal tastes lay principally in jazz. On 14 October 1964, Watts married Shirley Ann Shepard, whom he had met before the band became successful. The couple had one daughter, Serafina, born in March 1968, who in turn gave birth to Watts' only grandchild, a girl named Charlotte. They remained married until his death. Watts lived near Dalton, a rural village in West Devon, where he owned an Arabian horse stud farm. He also owned a percentage of the Rolling Stones' various corporate entities. While all the Rolling Stones collected cars, Watts never had a driving license, preferring to view his cars as beautiful objects. Watts was also a fan of cricket, and had a collection of cricket memorabilia. Watts expressed a love-hate attitude towards touring, stating in 2003 that he loved playing with Keith and the band, but wasn't interested in being a pop idol sitting there with girls screaming. In 1989, the Rolling Stones were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Watts did not attend the ceremony. Watts' personal life appeared to be substantially quieter than those of his bandmates and many of his rock and roll colleagues. On stage, he seemed to furnish a calm and amused counterpoint to his flamboyant bandmates. Known for his loyalty to Shirley, Watts consistently refused sexual offers from groupies on the road. In Robert Greenfield's STP, A Journey Through America with the Rolling Stones, a documentary of the 1972 American tour, it is noted that when the group was invited to the Playboy Mansion during that tour, Watts took advantage of Hugh Hefner's game room instead of frolicking with the women. I've never filled the stereotype of the rock star, he remarked. Back in the 70s. One anecdote relates that in the mid-1980s, an intoxicated Jagger phoned Watts' hotel room in the middle of the night, asking, where's my drummer? Watts reportedly got up, shaved, dressed in a suit, put on a tie and freshly shined shoes, descended the stairs, and punched Jagger in the face, saying, never call me your drummer again. You're my fucking singer. He expressed regret for the incident in 2003, attributing his behavior to alcohol. In the mid-1980s, Watts' previously moderate use of alcohol and drugs became excessive. They were my way of dealing with family problems, he said. I think it was a mid-life crisis. All I know is that I became totally another person around 1983 and came out of it about 1986. I nearly lost my wife and everything over my behavior. Despite having quit smoking in the late 1980s, Watts was diagnosed with throat cancer in June 2004. He underwent a course of radiotherapy and the cancer went into remission. Watts' last live concert with the band was the 30th of August 2019 at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, Florida. He had never missed a single concert throughout his career with the band. 
Besides Jagger and Richards, he is the only member to have appeared on every album in the Rolling Stones discography. On 5 August 2021, it was reported that Watts had elected to sit out the resumption of the US no-filter tour due to a heart procedure surgery and that Steve Jordan would temporarily replace him on drums. Watts died at a London hospital on 24 August 2021, at the age of 80, with his family around him. Watts' bandmates Jagger, Richards and Wood paid tribute to him, along with former bandmate Wyman. Several other celebrities and rock musicians paid tribute to Watts following his death. Two days after his death, Jason Isbell and Britney Spencer dedicated a cover performance of Gimme Shelter to Watts. On 27 August, the band's social media accounts shared a video tribute to Watts consisting of a montage of pictures and film footage. The montage was set to the Rolling Stones' 1974 track, If You Can't Rock Me, which opens with the lines, the band's on stage and it's one of those nights. The drummer thinks that he is dynamite, oh yeah, Watts was laid to rest in Devon after a small ceremony. Condolences to his family and fans, if you have a fond memory of Charlie Watts please share it below.